Hi, everybody. Good evening. Uh, welcome to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you all. I mean, uh, for, you who, uh, for those of you who watched the last show that we did live, uh, it was our 50th show, and we had a, you know, balloons and parties and all kinds of stuff. And uh, what I'd like to thank you for is all the calls and the, the uh, letters we got thanking us for doing it and wishing us 50 more, 100 more, 1,000 more. <laughs> but I don't, I don't know about 1,000 more. It was tough to get through the 50. So tonight's show is another very special show. We have with us tonight, I would say, a person whose love and connection to the heart energy, the heart chakra, is one of the purest, in my experience, of, of all the people who've come through the show and all the people I've met. And in a way, more important to me is that this person, Claire Hartsong, has a humbleness and, and a down-to-earthness, although some of the things she says are not quite so down-to-earth, but the vibration from her is, is, is so real and so genuine that you're in for a really wonderful experience tonight. And we're going to do some work, or, or Claire's going to do some toning uh, with her voice, with a, possibly with a, a drum and possibly with a, a crystal bowl, a beautiful crystal bowl. And later on in the evening, which I know everybody's been waiting for for a long time, I'm going to get a healing. So maybe by the next show, <laughs> we'll, we'll have at least some good energy out of me. So normally at this time, I lead uh, all of us in a, in a short meditation. But tonight, because Claire, Claire is here and, and she and we all thought that it would be a beautiful experience if she led us in, in an opening invocation and atoning. So I'd like to turn it over to Claire and just really, just really follow her and be open to the love that's coming through her and, and let that love open the love in you. So please, Claire. Welcome. It's wonderful to be with you again. And my desire this evening is to celebrate a space of love and to bring forth through each of our hearts that inner song that uh, connects us to our source, to the God, Goddess, Self that we indeed are. And uh, so if we can just take a moment now to breathe, taking a deep breath, allowing a full sweet inhalation and exhale letting go of the cares and concerns and another deep breath and this time emphasizing the exhalation allowing a sigh good now, bringing your awareness to your heart center, experiencing yourself as if you were standing before a sunbeam, and now step into that pillar of light, filling yourself with this luminous presence and a sense of connection to the very source of your being above and below and now we are going to allow for the Hathor energy to come through and play and celebrate with us as we bring our awareness together into oneness and allow this flow of radiance through our being.
Wow, thank you very much, Claire. That was really beautiful. Uh, yeah, tonight's show uh, is going to be about a lot about the power of sound, the power of vibration, the healing power, the soothing power. Uh, and there's been, uh, I think the gentleman is no longer of this plane, but uh, he had done this, this a tremendous amount of work, uh, Hans Jenny, uh, with sound and sound healing and, and the power of sound to change ba basically the, the organism of a human being to change uh, the actual uh, makeup, the act almost the DNA of, of substances of, of uh, I think one of the things he used was sand and how it goes from chaos with different sounds from chaos to order and back and forth so uh, Claire was, uh, uh, you know, wonderful enough to bring this video that she had that had this touched her so much. And we have the Hans Jenny video. Whenever we're ready to roll it, is that available? Okay, let's see it. We ready? Hans Jenny has shown with his films that particular tones, one tone in particular, when vibrating sand which has been placed on a metal plate can change the shape of the sand. It will take form into particular mandalas or shapes. And then when the tone is played louder or higher, another frequency is played, the shape changes. Now, if this happens with matter as simple as sand and, and powders, what's happening to us at the molecular level when a single tone is played at the body? At the drone or the single tone, when directed toward a specific place in the body, can change the structure within the tissue, within the molecules. What you see with the work of uh, is you see um, sound um, transforming um, heaps and piles and, and films of uh, inanimate matter, of um, materials of various forms and consistencies, just by the introduction of sound, taking on, um, in a process of gradual differentiation, all the patterns and forms that we see around us in nature, as if it's like a model of the creation through sound. Many traditions have this understanding that uh, the world as we know it comes into being and is sustained in its beingness through sound, uh, whether it's the, uh, the Om in the Hindu tradition or the Word or, or, or the Logos in the, in the Western tradition. There are these expressions. First there was the Word and the Word was made into flesh or hallowed be thy name. Everywhere you find these references, not just in the ancient Vedic traditions, all over in all the traditions of the world. You have this idea that the very first anything is a sonorous event which, which brings or about the transformation of spirit into matter. You think of this huge ocean of silence interacting with itself. When the silence is broken, what else could you get but sound? And that sound then manifests as the whole. So that's the cosmic hum or the cosmic um, explosion or the Big Bang as you call it. Uh, but, you know, there's different ways of expressing the same idea that sound creates form. In India, as you know, there's this whole tradition of mantra healing, for example, of primordial sound. And here there are sounds that are taken that elicit very specific forms. If I make the sound a, after a while it will vibrate every cell in my body. Similarly. I will see the rest of that a little later, but now we're here with Claire on the set. Hi, Claire. Hi, it's wonderful Hi. to be with you again, <laughs> again Alan. Again, it's really exciting. <laughs> so why don't you just fill people in what you've been doing and what you've been experiencing and what has been like the thrust of the movement in your life over the last period? Well, that the movement and the current uh, is actually 
feels like an immense wave and many of us I, I think are feeling like we're being carried out to a much much bigger sea of late and uh, and I would say that that if I were going to put a label on the primary current that's been carrying me it's the energy of the Hathors. Okay now for people who didn't see the show now I know there are a few people out there who are probably seeing this show hadn't seen all the last shows why don't you explain what the Hathors are and you know, give a little background. All right. Maybe you can uh, uh, get a picture of, of one of these images uh, while I'm speaking. Um, the Hathors are a wondrous beings who have been a part of our Earth's history for 850,000 years. They came at the request of our planetary logo, Sanat Kamara, at a time that, of the Earth's evolution was looking rather bleak and because they come from an evolutionary spiral that is very similar to ours and, and very much succeeded in their uh, ascension their process evolution. yes in their parallel universe they uh, are experts at the particular uh, um, manners of uh, of ascending, dealing with this tremendous challenge that we have of unifying duality and, and the, the sense of being separate from each other and from our everything, our everything right. from, our, from our sourceness. So they, they, through the capacity of opening... But they went through that same experience. Exactly. They yeah. did go through... So they're the, in kind of like our big brothers. Right. They're sisters. our elder brothers and sisters. Right. And um, they came to, into a space of unity. They discovered in that space of unity the power of sound. Um, they're masters of also light and color as a trinity with that sound. And in that way, they work with the angelic realms. And, um, and they hold for us the coherent frequency of love. That's a nice frequency. Oh, it is. And we could use a little more of it out here, it seems. And <laughs> we're having that choice in every moment of our lives to, in this contrast, contrasting world, to choose either love or fear. And the Hathors consistently, with, without missing the mark, are holding that frequency for us. So as our elders and brothers, they're very excited about exploring and evolving with us because what's happening on planet Earth is unprecedented, even for them. So they're, they, along with all of the other masters of many, many realms of spirit, are here uh, watching and co-creating with humanity at this extraordinary time of accelerated change. and and evolution as the entire planet is choosing to ascend and come into that love vibration. Yeah, you know, my favorite motto is we can use all the help we can get. So it's <laughs> We've good got to it. Yes, we have it. And the Hathors uh, are very, very allowing in their unconditional love of us. They have no expectations. They allow us to go at our pace and they will not intrude or interfere. They are beings who love jokes. They love to laugh and, and dance and sing. And the goddess Hathor, who's represented in Egyptian mythology, was an actual being. And, um, and she, in the Egyptian understanding, was the goddess of love, of fertility, of dance and music, and was a master healer and facilitated with Isis, Osiris, and Horus, the, 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 the principle of resurrection. So in other ascension. words, a lot of the things we think are myths actually did happen, and we, yes. because we didn't know how to do them, we made them a myth, but now they're kind of, kind of coming back, yes. and that information is in, being made more and more available. Indeed, and in fact, uh, there's a wonderful book that was published this past year 
um, facilitated by Tom Kenyon, who's been a spokesperson for the Hawthors for the past five years, and um, Virginia Essene, the Hathor material, Messages from an Ascended Civilization. And I would encourage our audience to uh, read this material. It, it's filled with wonderful exercises and it's a message of hope and and tenderness and, and great applause for we who uh, live here on the planet dealing with what we deal with. <laughs> <laughs> so and your and your thrust in particular is to like bring the the like goddess energy, the love goddess energy of yes. the Hathor yes. experience bridge it to earth, make yes. it available in a human form to, you know, do workshops and things like that and healings yes. and... Yes, I, I have a great desire to open myself to the energies of the Great Divine Mother Presence, that maternal... Nurturing. Nurturing essence and uh, to heal. I've been going through a, a profound experience of healing my own body and um, emotions and so on and my human experience has been a challenging one just as each of us have challenging experiences. I don't know anybody and who's not carried around <laughs> some cross at some point. <laughs> yes and that cross is being made light now as as truly heaven and earth are meeting at that center point of the heart and the Hathors are here to celebrate and facilitate the opening of the way through our heart center where we can meet our Christed consciousness, know that within and um, uh, then the yoke is made easy. And, and you're getting specific information. I mean, I, I know about the show. I mean, Claire faxed me, you know, modern conveniences. A message from the Hathos about the show that was really specific. I mean, it was it was really surprising to me. So I mean, in a way, they're co-creating and working with us in, yes. in in very specific ways. If people are open to it. Yes. I said we finally got a good director for this show. If only they could come on and host it, then the show might be okay. But so, but I mean, hey, you've got a Hathor right here <laughs> helping me out. Finally, maybe I'll do a good show. So, so I, and that. You're feeling really in resonance with that. I mean, I know on one of the shows you did, well, this is the third show. I don't think we've had any guests on for three shows, so it's really extraordinary that you are. Because usually, for some reason, I, we choose to have different guests, but every time, you know, I think of like, well, if Claire can come on, that would be fantastic. So, and, and you're feeling like this movement with you and the Hathors and that goddess energy. I, I started to say the last time you did a, uh, a channeling of Saint Germain. But the time before last. The time before uh -huh. last. Uh, but but you're feeling this movement with you and the Hathors is really in alignment, really in harmony with you yes, at this point. Yes, very much so, and it it, it fills me with a, a sense of great joy and enthusiasm. Uh, again, it's that wave that that I'm choosing to ride at present, and I and I experience Saint Germain on the surfboard with me, mm -hmm. and and the energies of the Hathors are like the wave. And, and a multitude of angels, if you will. Um, and they're very aligned with the dolphins and the whales. So I see them as these interdimensional beings who are frolicking with us, inviting us to laugh and love more during this time of great challenge. What do you think is, is the best lesson or the best tool or however you describe it for us to, you know, in a sense to be lighter, to not take ourselves so seriously, to, you know, know we're in a human body and we're carrying some amount of physicality and crosses and still rise to the lightness, to the love? I would say to remember to pause and be still and to come back to the breath to just to be simple and childlike and to be in nature and uh, nothing is more exquisite than, than to be with the, the magnificent forms that nature reveals and mirrors who we are and in, in that simplicity we can relax. Saint Germain says 
Freedom is spelled R-E-L-A-X, and I would say that the Hathors hmm. are uh, saying the same, to that, very right. much so, right. yes. And so, in other words, it's, I mean, I used to say that, you know, if we would really just look, you know, realize what, you know, that we're hurtling through space on a ball, just the, 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 the magnificence and the, the magic of it. Yes. And, you know, we think all our problems and the rent and this is so important if we realize the magnificence that we could look in the mirror and have a consciousness, you know, say, well, a wrinkle of this, my hair, you know. It, the, the, the glory and the magic of the whole experiment, the whole game is so incredible that if we could just, re the more we could remember that, come back in touch with that. Yes, just to be in awe and wonderment. Yeah, and then gratefulness, because like right yes, behind Yes, an that. attitude of gratitude, and I'm hearing St. Germain say, an attitude of latitude. Mm -hmm. So when you say latitude is like, not that I'm right or that this is the right way or that it's just that always are the center and then the spokes yes you know it's interesting because lately I've been you know I mean a lot of people come through the show and a lot of people have different ways of expressing yes. glory and love and it's like you know it's like sides of the pyramid and sometimes people get really high on the pyramid and it looks like they're seeing everything but until you get to the tip until you get to the oneness you know there's still duality, there's still something opposing you, but at the tip, there's, no, there's, there's no duality, there's that, only oneness. Yes. And that's, that's really what people want, yes. is to experience that. And that's, in a sense, what the dolphins are here to do, and the Hathors and the Archangels, and, you know, just please try to learn that lesson and experience it. Right, I so much appreciate the message that you have on this year's, or this season's, um, uh, flyer. flyer. And would you like to say that? Uh, you remember well, what I, that I don't, is? I, know, I don't know the partic <laughs> that particular one, but I, I know like on every show in the beginning and opening, dedicated to the oneness. Right. I don't know, you don't mean that one. Yes, that, that, that particular one. Yeah, that one to me is like, right. you know, I mean, that's why do we have, that's the it? essence, yeah. If right. we could experience the oneness, then everything else would change. And we then, wouldn't treat the trees like we do and the dolphins like we do and each other like we do and ourselves like we do. And that brings us to the, so to the wonderful <laughs> opportunity that we have to to recognize the perfection that we are already healed and whole, that there's nothing really to fix right. in, in spite of yeah, the appearance of things. I remember you and I things. talking about that at the beach the last time. Right. Is that it, it, it seems it's, like we're separate and that's the illusion. It seems like almost, you know, we have free will and we can make good, and, you know, but in essence we're, we're always one and we always will be one. Indeed. So as we come to that center point, there's that, that allness, the totality that is breathing, I am, and that pulsation is this sounding into a, a new creation. And, uh, and, and it feels like love in a human being, when a human being experiences like that in a human body, what yes. it, with the way a human being describes it is love. Yes. And, and, lo it feel, and, and bliss, and yeah. And it's that love that facilitates the the resonance of harmony that brings all that has been in dissonance or discord back unto the perfection that, uh, that in truth it is, even though it's been mirroring perhaps the opposite. It looks like it's, it looks, looks like, like it. duality. It looks like it, but that illusion you know, What is, is everything made of? I mean, can anything be made of anything mm -hmm. else? Mm -hmm. You know, it's what I mean, love. what's the, yeah? What's Indeed. the root? The root right. is that one love, yes. essence, that truth. Yes. So and and that essence is sound. It's one of its manifestations. Yes, one of its. I mean, it could be light, and it could and, be a vibration, and, yes. and, right? Because and, they're all the same. And those are sense. interchangeable. Right. Exactly. Right. So, so we, but your your feeling now and your movement now is that sound is the clearest way for you to bring that forth, or. I see them all interrelated. Sometimes light is sound for me, and sound is sometimes color. Sometimes I feel as though I'm sounding currents of rainbow light. And I often experience the sounds that the Hawthors facilitate through my vocal cords as a way of greening the planet, returning our beloved Earth back to the beautiful garden. Mm -hmm. that she, you know, she's holding that blueprint and it's just simply for us as human beings to choose to join with her 
and enter the garden. Let me ask you a little about the uh, the healing you're going to do. Now you're going to do it on me, but I know it's like the, the, the with hope you. Is with me. Right on me. <laughs> Everybody should do something on me. Right? But I mean, the, the feeling was that it's like in the audience too. It's going to go, it's yes. a healing for anyone who's yes. open to it. Yes. And hopefully more than me. No. Yes. It, 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 we're all connected, so right. of course it's... When does it, the vibration stop? I mean, is it going to stop at the end of the hall or the end of the studio? It's just going to go out. And yes, anybody indeed. who's available for Yes, it. indeed. Anyone who chooses to open your heart to the frequencies of love, for love is the power that facilitates that healing process. And with intent, there can be a shift in time and space. And when time and space opens, then love has uh, room to be felt. It's not to be thought about. We don't it's think about it. It's, an, it's right. a direct experience. Right. It's a direct revelation of who we are exactly. in our essence. And that, and that facilitates any real easement where there's been tension held in the body or congested energy that is choosing to move and change as your soul evolves and, and expands. So in this, in this healing demonstration that we're doing, uh, you're going to be guided like step by step or, do you, or is it just like vibrationally? It, it will be in the moment. I'll, I, I will hear and uh, a guidance to, to perhaps move to a certain area. Much of it is very, very intuitive. Uh, my understanding is that the Hawthors have a desire to primarily facilitate the area of your heart. And, and thymus? And your, and your, the thymus gland here, mm. your immune system, to just yeah, give you a, me up a, little, a right? little boost there. Yeah, let's go, I'm ready. And, uh, so, it, with you, it, this is very much a co-creation, uh -huh. you understand. As you're open and allowing and with your intent, then I can join with you in, in that space. And then all, all that is required is, is to allow uh -huh. the love to come through I'll and do, what it, I can do its do. thing. I'll give it a shot. <laughs> hey, I, <laughs> I, tr I trust your capacity to, oh, we'll to uh, open. Uh -huh. So, and you're going around the country doing, and the world in a sense, uh, doing workshops and healings and soul portraits and all just different kinds of stuff, just expressing that energy and that love and that, that yes. goddess energy that the Hathors are making available to you in a sense. Yes, to all of humanity. They're joining with us. But and, at this point you have to are, say that you're more conscious of it and more <clears throat> attuned to yes, it. Yes, I'm, I'm one of a, of a growing number of individuals who are becoming aware of their connection with the Hathor energy. And I'm choosing to be conscious with it and to share it. And um, I choose to do whatever facilitates my heart opening and uh, Facilitating the Hawthorne energy definitely does that for me. So, that. okay. Well, I think we're going to get ready for the second half of that Hans Jenny. Why All don't right. you describe it a little bit, like what the, the right. you know the back part of All it? All right, is. good. the The name is actually Hans Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> I was close. I almost yes, had most of the letters right. That's <laughs> yes. And um, we'll honor both, both <laughs> pronunciations. The Brooklyn pronunciation was used tonight, everybody, and I hope you like <laughs> So uh, this is a, um, uh, a, a really a wonderful demonstration of the effect of sound on the molecular structure of matter, wh whatever form it is, that it illustrates that indeed the uh, the energies of the original sound current, the original word, om, as uh, Deepak Chopra was talking about, is, is vibration. And when sound shifts its tonation and the attunement moves according to certain harmonic laws and principles, then Though the matter, the atomic particles, as is demonstrated by the, the sand, 
moves in these wondrous configurations, these sacred geometries. And so it takes form, it takes, it, for, it yes. goes from chaos to... Yes, where there's an implicate order always, even within chaos. Chaos is the womb of it, creation. It looks chaotic to us, but if we yes. could see the with, root of it... Right, with, with, with a clearer vision and right. understanding, we would see that impl implicate order that is resounding and then channeling that flow into yet a new creation for there's always this movement and expansion there's always a god within a god within a god there's oh. always this growth, growth. and yeah, evolution the, right. and and that evolution can include involution. It, it's, it's a process of ascending into more and more unfocused states of consciousness, returning us back to primordial light, sound, and color. And that light, sound, and color coming into a coalescence through intention taking form. So there's always this descension ascension process occurring in every now moment with every breath. And as we facilitate this experience together, we will have the opportunity to actually shift some of the structuring of your body. All right. Hope I get younger and handsomer. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, healthy will be better and more loving. Whatever uh, your intent. Right. Okay. Let's say uh, more loving, more compassionate, more open. Okay. So whenever we're ready in the booth, let's do the, the last half of the Hans Jenny, and then we'll have the healing demonstration that Claire and I are going to do together. Which will manifest into a distinct form known as a Sri Yantra. The human voice can also be made visible with a simple apparatus. The various vowels show typical characteristics depending on the nature of their sound. We can see the spectrum, as it were, of the sounds. If you impose vibrations on plates of sand and so on, you get patterns of form appearing. The forms in nature are not due to vibrations being imposed from outside on passive particles. They're owing to the whole vibratory structure of activity which makes up the particle itself. Atoms are vibratory structures of activity. Molecules are vibratory structures of activity. Crystals are. Now, in the case of a living organism, the whole thing is a complex rhythmic structure or pattern of activity. In our own case, we know, for example, we have daily cycles of activity, slow rhythms. Women have monthly cycles. We have the breathing cycles, the heartbeat cycles, shorter um, cycles. We have then more rapid cycles of activity in the brain revealed by electroencephalographs and so on. And then within our cells, we have biochemical cycles, many of them per second. Uh, and then within those biochemical cycles, uh, vibratory patterns in the proteins, very fast vibrations there, and then the vibrations within the uh, atoms inside those. So there's a nested hierarchy of, of vibrations within vibrations. At every level, uh, there's a structure of activity which is vibratory or rhythmic. One of the main differences, I think, between Gandharva, Vade music, and any other music in the world, and this includes even Indian classical music is that there are specific rags or specific melodies for certain times. So, Alan, are you ready? I am ready. All right. So what I would invite you and our audience to uh, do at this point is to just visualize yourself and actually it's not a matter of having to see something just imagine in whatever way is natural and comfortable for you just placing yourself now inside a square based pyramid 
Good. And now, the capstone of this pyramid, visualize or experience a purple-violet flame. And now bringing your awareness to your base chakra, the Mulandara chakra at the base of your spine. Simultaneously bring your awareness to the capstone of the pyramid and easily and effortlessly the energy is compelled to join, creating now a tube of light moving through your body on a vertical axis. And take a deep breath now, Alan. And emphasizing the exhalation on the next breath. And again, breathing deep, 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 down, 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 good. Good, all right. So just allow yourself to be as relaxed as possible within this space. Aware of the flow of your breath as this purifying quality of color of the violet flame spins and spirals and radiates throughout the central column of light spinning now out through your intention to any areas of your body where you are sensing any contraction, tension. And breathe now into those spaces with an awareness of this violet energy opening relaxing. And now let's take another deep breath together. Emphasizing the exhale with a sigh. Just let's do it one more time. Just emphasizing how you're feeling with sound. Yeah, this is not about making particularly beautiful sound. We're wanting to Touch those parts of the body, acknowledge the tightness, the contraction, perhaps allowing that to sound just as it is, and then it will come into harmony. Because we're holding continually through this experience the coherent pattern.
Obviously, if anybody wants any information, you know the number, 805-687-2053. Claire's all over the country, so whenever you see it, call me, and I'll tell you where Claire's going to be. Thank you, God bless you, and we'll go out with Claire. Good night. Thank you.